Welcome back to the Maven Show. This is your host Rohit. Today we have Jonathan, the student editor and podcast host. Thank you, Jonathan, for getting into the show. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate you having me here. So, would you just like to give a quick intro of yourself? So, yes, quick intro for me. My name is Jonathan Jordan. I'm a full time writer and book coach. So, back in 2017, I founded my company Wardrobe Media. That's spelled W O R D R O B E. I, I love a good wordplay. <laughs> so, so that's what I decided to call my company. And really, I started it so I could help people publish books and get their ideas out into the world, which was a challenge because not everyone in the world wants to write mm -hmm. a book. But we'll talk a little bit here in a second, of course, how storytelling played a role in me growing the business. Uh, and then outside of my work as a writer, I do also host a couple of podcasts myself. One of them is called The Games Odyssey. That one's more for fun. It's a show about the history of the Olympic Games. I love sports. I love the Olympics. So so I, I, I enjoy sharing those stories through that medium. And then I also run a show with my wife called Magical Movie Marathon. And that's more for her business where we talk about Disney movies and we talk about going to the Disney park. But again, there's a strong element there of the importance of stories to our lives and how we experience storytelling. So, uh, yeah, I I just love talking about stories at the end of the day. <laughs> and I, I love stories. I tell people that all the time. And I think most people do. And so to get to our topic today here, you know, ultimately, storytelling is about how you communicate an idea to the world. And when it comes to entrepreneurship and when it comes to branding, that means communicating that idea to potential customers, right? <laughs> so I think this is something that a lot of people do really struggle with. They know that they need to have a strong story to be successful. They're just not really sure how to find it. And so... um, if, if you'd like me to, I'd, I'd love to share a few ingredients for how people can find their story. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Yeah. So I really think here's the three things that everyone needs to think about with their branding and finding their story. First off, you have to start with your why. What is your motivation for why you do what you do every single day? You have to really get serious with, with yourself about what that looks like and write that down and actually believe in it. Second, you have to look at your vision. What is the direction that you are wanting to go with your business? Where do you see yourself five years from now, 10 years from now? If you don't have a clear vision, you're never going to be able to find a clear story to tell to people. It, it's just absolutely essential in this process. And then the third ingredient that you need to be able to really figure out your story is you need to find the emotional connection. Uh -huh. What What is that emotional connection between your why and between your vision? Because that's also going to become the emotional connection between you and your Audience. customers. Yeah, really. Yes, a hundred percent. So if you can get a clear idea of those three things, your story is in there. <laughs> you just need to be honest with yourself about those three things. What is your why? What is your vision? And then what is the emotional connection you want with people? Uh, for example, when people, when they ask me why mm -hmm. I'm a book coach and mm -hmm. why I'm a writer, the story that I usually tell, it, it sounds something like this. I will say, you know what? The people that I work with have really great ideas that can change the world, but they don't know the right words to communicate those ideas. So I help idea havers become storytellers. So that's the story that I tell because it combines all of those things. It's got my why in there. It's got my my vision. My vision is to help them become a storyteller. And then it's got that emotional connection. These, these are people who want to change the world through their ideas, right? So I combine all three of those things together when I tell people what I do. 
customers are not going to remember all of the numbers and features that you throw out at them about your company. Now, that's great for investors. If you're raising money for your startup, investors are absolutely going to want to see projections and your big selling points. So I'm not saying those things aren't important. But in terms of how you connect with a customer, it's absolutely about the emotion and they'll always remember how you made them feel. Yep. And unfortunately, there's just a lot of brands out there who they focus on the wrong things. And instead of making their customers feel excited, they're making them feel bored <laughs> because they don't have a clear story. They lack that emotional connection. So I think there's a lot of different types of emotions that a brand and an entrepreneur can tap into with the story that they're telling their customers. You can make them, you can make them laugh, right? You can make them feel a sense of joy. You can make them feel excited. You can make them feel sentimental. You can make them feel nostalgic. Uh, you know, why do we see so many, think about Hollywood. Why do we see so many reboots of brands that were popular back in the 80s? It's because of the nostalgia factor. You yeah. can make people feel sexy. Uh, you can even make people feel frustrated. That's yep. not even a bad emotion. Um, frustration can actually be a really powerful emotion because it can cause people to realize, hey, I'm unhappy with the way I'm doing things right now. And now here's someone offering me a way out of that frustration. So, um, you know, think about the last time that you were online and you watched an ad all the way through, right? I think most of us, we see an ad pop up on YouTube and we, really? we skip ahead as soon as we can, right? Every time, every time. <laughs> every time, yeah. So think about the last time you actually paid attention to one and you actually watched it all the way through. It was because of the way it made you feel. It did something to make you feel curious or excited or it made you laugh. So that's what you've really got to tap into is that emotional connection. Telling people that you're the best supplier of your product is not an emotional connection. Uh, but telling people, hey, I want to help you solve the problem that you have in your life because it's it's annoying you and it's disrupting huh? your life, that is an emotional connection. Got it. And how you would like to speak about like the <clears throat> how storytelling and emotional connection between brand and audience is different in both corporate and personal branding because personal branding is obviously yeah. different and corporate branding is a different thing, you know? Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's it's very different. And I think you need to have both stories. I think you need to have a corporate branding story and then I think you need to have a personal branding story. So, uh, so we'll start with corporate first. Uh, that one's a little bit more obvious and I think easier to nail down. Mm -hmm. That's the story that connects with a larger group of people. So that's business to customer, if you're thinking about it in business terms. So it's really about what you're communicating to people about what we were just saying. It's here's the problem I can help you solve through my business, right? Personal branding can feel a little bit more challenged because it's more about the story that connects between you and another individual person to person. Uh, for example, I'll kind of break this down with my with my own business and myself. So I shared a second ago that my corporate branding is that I help idea havers become storytellers. And so that helps me connect my services for my company to yeah. potential customers. Uh, they That covers a wide group of people who say, yes, I have a great idea. I just don't know how to communicate it. And yeah. that's something they want to do for their business. But on a personal level, when I connect with a client, when I'm talking to them over Zoom or on the phone and we're working on a project together or I'm pitching myself, maybe we're not even working together yet. Yeah. My story at that point, my personal branding is more focused on the simple fact that I discovered it's a lot of fun to help other people write their books. And I'll even say that a lot of times. They'll ask me in those phone calls when I'm pitching myself and my service, they'll say, okay, but tell me about you, Jonathan. What is it about you that likes working on books? And I'll straight up tell them because it's fun, okay? Yeah. 
<laughs> that's where the emotion part comes in, where I connect with them on a personal level and I'm communicating to them, hey, I think it will be fun to work with you. And in terms of sales, mm -hmm. that's a far better sales pitch than me trying to say, oh, I'm the best book coach in the world. I'm the best writer in the world. I'm going to help you sell a million books, right? Like those are empty promises. If I can just communicate to them sincerely that I think we're going to have fun working together, yeah, that is far more powerful. So that's my personal branding <laughs> is this is going to be fun working together. And frankly, a lot of times the customers that I work with, they're stressed out at the beginning of the book writing process. They're overwhelmed. They don't know what they're going to do. They don't know what they're going to say exactly. So if I can transform their stress into fun, then yep. that's a win for both of us. And I think I think most companies can do that. If you can find a way to convert your customers' stress into fun, then you set up that emotional connection with them. And um, and, and tell you what, can we also talk for a second about your internal story that you tell yourself? Because I think that's important too. So I think behind all of this, there's also the story you tell yourself as a business owner. Mm -hmm. And this may not be something that everyone knows about. It's more about how you motivate yourself. It's mm -hmm. more about your mindset and how you keep yourself positive. So for me, when I started my business in 2017, I had no customers. I didn't even know how to find customers, honestly. Really? So I, I had to start out by telling myself the story, one day I'm going to be a full-time writer. And I didn't know exactly what that looked like yet, but that was the story I told myself over and over. And it helped me stay motivated early on when things weren't going so well, I would get a customer and have them for a while. But then, I, then sometimes I would go months before I had someone else to work with. So I wasn't making a ton of money. I was still needing to work another job full time. But this also helped me make decisions in my business, because sometimes an opportunity would come around that I would be considering. And then I would ask myself, okay, is this project, is it actually worth pursuing? Is it actually going to help me become a full-time writer? Or is it actually going to become a distraction? Is it going to pull me away from that? Is it going to take away the time I need to focus on being a full-time writer? So there were opportunities that came along, honestly, where I could have made a little bit of money, but it would have taken away from the story I was working towards of being a full-time writer. So I chose to walk away from those opportunities and focus in on what would help me fulfill that story that I was telling myself every single day. So I think, I think that is just as important, your internal story, as what you tell other people. Why the storytelling is only a secret behind each successful brand? Like that's, that's a really great question. So I think the surprising thing people discover about great storytelling is that it's actually not about you at all. It's about your audience and it's about your customer. And so the the brands that do storytelling best, they actually don't make it about themselves. They make it about their audience. They make it about the person that they're trying to reach. Um I think too many entrepreneurs and brands go out into the world and they try to make themselves the hero of the story. Uh -huh. And then they wonder why they're not succeeding. And they may be really great at what they do. And so they're wondering, man, I'm so good at what I do. Why isn't anyone else recognizing? But it's because the best brands, what they recognize is they have to make the customer the real hero of the story. So going back for a second to your why, what's really motivating you? <laughs> is it, you know, is it to make a lot of money? There's nothing wrong with making a lot of money, but you're going to make a lot more money if you help someone else solve a problem in their life, if you put them at the center of the story. So I think that's what you have to ask yourself is how can I make my customer the hero of the story? What will make their life better? If you can do that, if you can find the way to make your potential customer the hero and you see yourself as the assistant helping them get 
to uh, the end of their journey, then I think coming up with the right story becomes a little bit easier at that point because it takes some of the pressure off of having to uh, always prove that you're the best. Um, what you do is you focus your attention on how to make their life better. So I think that's the secret is too many people try to put themselves at the center of the story when they need to figure out how to put the customer at the center. So even going back to what you asked me about my story that I tell my potential yeah. customers, you'll notice even though I tell them, hey, I think it'll be fun to work with you. At the end of the day, I'm not actually talking about myself. I'm talking about them. You're the one who's going to make this fun. So I don't make the story about myself. And I've had way more success once I started doing that than when I tried to tell people why I would be the best writer and book coach for them. <laughs> and again, I think the surprising thing there is that you end up making more money that way. You end up building stronger relationships with clients that way because they see how much you value them. And that adds so much more value to your service than anything else you could do. It was lovely to talk to you. So thank you so much for having into the show and sharing everything about the storytelling and behind each brand and so on, you know? Absolutely. No, thanks for having me on. I always love talking about this. And so for, you know, for anyone who is interested, um, if you, if you want to learn more about storytelling and just continuing to work on that part of your brand, especially if you have to do a lot of writing for your brand, um, go to my website, uh, wardrobemedia.com. That's W-O-R-D-R-O-B-E-M-E-D-I-A.com. And I actually have a newsletter on there you can sign up for. And I share this kind of advice and thoughts with people all the time. Well, thank you so much for having in. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. <laughs>